I am recording. Uh, okay. Well, this is the, 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 I forget how our intro music goes. It's like. You're not going to edit the beginning, are you? No, I'm gonna put it in. I'm no, I mean you're not in. gonna. You're you're gonna leave in us just going da 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 da. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Mini Manga Talk. It's the first episode since October, and by October I mean last week. It was last week, guys. I don't know what you're talking about. You're insane. You're crazy. Yeah, definitely hasn't been like six months. Hasn't been six months, you know. It's uh. Um, anyway, <laughs> anyways, uh, w today we are going to be talking about Chainsaw Man. It is, uh, uh, easily one of my favorite manga of all time. Uh, like, easy top five. I forced Adele to read it. Like, literally put a gun to Adele's head. Um, so uh, we're, we're just going to talk it out, talk about it. I'm going to say some of the things I like about it, and I want to hear Adele's opinions, because Adele has, uh, has uh, saved a lot of her opinions for this conversation. So let's, uh, let's get to it. Let's get to it, Adele. Uh, you literally just finished uh, Volume 11 of Chainsaw Man, like, today, like, 30 minutes before we started recording. So this is quite fresh on your mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh... So basically the same as before. Um, I don't know what the fuck I just read. Like, it's like, I get it. I get the characters. Um, and I get, like, it's it's amazing what he did with Makima. How, like, this was all, like, planned out at the beginning. Every action. Every action Makima does makes sense. But at the same time, like, so much happens so fast. Like, the last... I want to say, like, between volume, like, I don't want to say volume 8, but probably, like, 9 to 11 especially. I feel like so much happens, like, bam, 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 that it's like my brain is struggling to keep up and, like, parse through yeah. everything. I almost yeah. wish it was a bit longer. I don't know. I yeah. don't know if he did it because, like, he was just wanting it, like, this part to be done or if, like, he was just like, this is what I want, and he wanted it to be like, boom, 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 or what. But it, it was a lot. It's kind of hard for me to make, comp like, thoughts that make sense on the second half. Because I'm just like, a lot. That was a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> no, yeah, I completely, I actually completely agree with you on that. Um, I wish it was a little bit longer, too. Um, Chainsaw Man is definitely something that, in my opinion, you cannot read just once. You have to read it, like, twice in order to sort of not just appreciate it, but understand everything. <laughs> like, it wasn't until my reread that I fully understood what happened in the Santa Claus arc. Uh, because that, the Santa Claus arc was very confusing amongst my first reading, and I didn't, like stop to just like uh, like try and reread it a bunch of times to understand it. I was just like okay whatever <laughs> and and moved on um but I I agree with you part of me wishes it was a little longer but then the other part of me sort of feels like the last sort of you know like quarter of chainsaw man going like boom 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 sort of adds to the feelings you're supposed to feel from this in my opinion it's when i said that the ending is i i said this in a conversation with you before um that i feel the ending is very end of evangelion-esque or like the ending of evangelion-esque and that's sort of kind of what i meant because like with evangelion you have this like typical um you know uh episodic format that you would expect from the action you know shonen that kind of thing and then all of a sudden in like the last five episodes everything literally goes to fucking shit and you have absolutely no time to breathe um and i i feel like it was intentional that way um but i can definitely see where that would 
that where that's not like something that most readers would like. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I'm trying to think if there's a manga that I that I've read off the top of my head that I'm like is super fast paced. Uh, the most I can think is maybe Night of the Beast, but that's because it's only like five volumes. Um, I wish it was also longer. Kind yeah. of for like similar reasons where it's like so much is happening that I'm like, I need time to absorb this, which I will say that if you were reading this is it was in what it was it in like jump where it's a weekly release or was it in one of the other jump? Oh, God, I monthly? forget. I forget. I think it was weekly. OK, uh, I feel like, like maybe if I was reading it as it was coming out, you know, you have like yeah, it was time weekly to absorb and process that information each week, mm -hmm. then it doesn't feel probably as fast. But like if you're just binge reading it, you're like, holy shit. But yeah, uh, I did also kind of say that like it took me what, like nine to ten volume, I think nine volumes to warm up to Denji completely like. To fully start liking him and yeah. it was because like it wasn't because i think he's a bad character i think he's a good character i i understand like I, all like i said the decisions all the characters make or yeah make they make sense um it was just hard for me to like connect or relate with a lot of them because they felt so much different than me other than the only one that i really connected with um for a long time was aki and then uh um, Angel Devil, I liked too. Um, after, but after like I, after like that volume nine or ten, where Denji starts like feeling, I guess kind of more human. Like he starts kind of building a conscience more, um, yeah. and like connecting to others emotionally and actually, um, you know, like like if, at the beginning he was like, oh, if Aki died, I wouldn't feel sad. If Power died, I wouldn't feel sad. If Makima died, I mean, I like her, I would be down for a bit, but I'd get over it. And that was something that, like, I, I was like, oh, that's the opposite of me. Like, I, I'm... So, I was... That was, like, something I was like, ah, man, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to connect to this kid. But then by the end, um, especially with what happens to Aki, like, fucking tore me apart. Um, which I feel like the author was... Or mangaka, either way you want to say it, uh, was foreshadowing that when he was like, oh, I won't feel bad if Aki died. And then Aki dies in, like, the most t terrible fucking way. And mm -hmm. Denji actually feels like shit. I feel like that was a big middle finger fuck you to me personally. But... Yeah, yeah, I'm glad that happened. I'm glad that happened. Uh, it's uh, one way that I can describe it is, I forget if this is actually a quote from the manga or not, or if, like, if I'm completely plagiarizing but um, one thing that I thought was actually kind of beautiful in, in Denji's character development was that when he was just a human, he was more of a devil than when he was more connected to the you know devil inside of him. He became more human the more he got better with his chainsaw man abilities and all that kind of stuff. The closer he got to actually you know releasing the chainsaw man he became more and more human like literally when the chainsaw man was fully released in all of its glory what are some of the first things that he does it's hunt down <laughs> kobetti and and basically force her to go on a date with him because he wanted things to be normal he was more connected to his human side the which is like which me saying that Sounds like the most stupidest, like, yeah, no shit. He became a better person and more in tune with his emotions as the story went on. That's kind of how a typical character development went. But I just thought that it was, for Denji specifically, since we know his very simple mindset and his very uncompassionate mindset at the beginning due to his background... It was just pretty, I don't know, I just thought it was pretty cool um, how his character progression ended up going by the end of it. Yeah. Yeah, especially, yeah, um, starting at the beginning, like you said, where I was, I was, <laughs> the part where, um, in volume 11, where he's like, I want to be Chainsaw Man, I want to, like, wake up in the morning, I'm actually tired of eating toast with jam, I want to eat steak, 
And he's like, I don't just want to flirt with girls. I want five, no ten girlfriends. I want to have tons of sex. Which I was like, okay, Dingy. But it also it was like <laughs> nice to see that he was kind of admitting that he wants more and isn't okay with like the borderline like we talked about where he, at the beginning, he's just like, I just want shelter. I would, I'll eat anything. Um, that was the other reason that I couldn't fully relate to him was like, and it was, like I said, it makes sense. He never had like safety. He didn't have anything, no connection. So anything he gets is going to be great at the beginning. So he was always happy. He's just like, everything's great. What more could I ask for? Um, I'll do anything to keep this basic piece. Because to him, awesome, incredible, whatever. Uh, and then to see him admit that, like, no, I actually do want more. I'm like, ah, finally, finally, he starts feeling like a human being, like someone who I can connect with, you know, like, (sighs) which, you know, the way he was acting before really was dog-like, like Makima said, because, of course, she's like, oh, yeah, I love humans because they're stupid and they run around and they like me and they listen and they're okay with, like, the bare minimum because it's not like they know any better. Which is basically yeah. how I was acting. Yeah, yeah. It was just the moment that um, that Makima just truly broke Denji and all he did was like lay on the couch. Uh, that that was just like I, I remember when I first read that part, I got like actual chills. I was like, how the fuck is this gonna continue? I I was I was just like I, I, I didn't expect that, I guess. Because when you think about, like, the type of person Denji is, that kind of reaction does make sense. Because, like, he's... The thing that he's always wanted is, you know, intimacy, basically. Mm -hmm. Just feeling safe, basic, just anything. Because he's had absolutely nothing his whole life. Um, And he's never been one to be, like shy around death either like what you said about him talking about like the different characters and how he wouldn't care if they died like that kind of stuff like at that moment i it was just the the catalyst of all these feelings that he has never felt before and just seeing power just die like right in front of him by this woman that he's been groomed the entire story to love and who like previously was just like yeah, if uh, he's like, I'm, I'm tired of feeling all these emotions. I'm not used to them. I, I swear, I would be, be, I would be better off if you just decided every move I make. And she's yeah. like, Oh, bet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bet. <laughs> Great. Finally, God. Yeah. Okay, let's go kill power. And he's like, What? Yeah. The minute <laughs> and she does. The minute he said the like, Yeah, I don't want to think anymore. Actually, thinking is really hard. Oh, just make me your dog. I'll do anything you said. I knew some shit was gonna go down, but I did not think it was gonna be like, hey, Power's at the door with a fucking birthday cake for you. Bam! Dead. (laughs) You know how pissed I was. I was so pissed because, like, for a second, after I finished Volume 10 and it was her death was not brought up again, I really thought he was just gonna never bring up Power again, and it was just gonna, that was gonna be it. This was going to drop to, like, a 4 out of 10 for me if that happened. Because I was nah, like, nah, fucking yeah. livid. I was oh, like, I... the connection <laughs> that they have, and that's all she gets is one bam and it nothing? Fuck you! Like, I was so pissed. <laughs> no, yeah. The way Power, her last scene, um, when she was like, I'm not going to be me anymore when I'm uh, resurrected. Um, but please, find me. And remind that blood devil of the friendship that you guys had. And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, God. Bro, and she's Power like, Power's my favorite, if you couldn't tell. I love power so much. When uh when she's literally like dragging Dingy's body away to safety and all that's left is like her top half and literal entrails are spilling out, it's just like fuck, man. Cause she's like Dingy's my my first friend so he can't die and you're just like seeing her flashbacks to be like well all life is trivial so no death is sad even my own and then it's just like but Dingy's my first friend so he can't die and I'm like (laughs) Like, no I know Uh, I think I think that's probably one of my 
favorite things about Chainsaw Man is, um, like you can find this in a lot of different media, you know, just like the character who says they don't care about anything, learning to care about things, but something just feels different about the Chainsaw Man characters because for the most part, most of them have absolutely no reason to care about each other and have absolutely, or, or from the perspective of someone like power, who's a devil literally quite literally has no reason to care about other people. Yeah. And, and to just see that actually happen by the end of the story, even if it is tragic is, is, I I don't know. I just thought it was handled beautifully. And, Part of it being short might have helped with that also. Because, uh, you know, it was just like the second we finally got all that, it was like stripped away immediately. Yeah. God. Aki Aki tears me the fuck up. And it's Oh, why, I love Aki so much. It's why I, I kind of felt I was like first two or three volumes, I was like, I I don't really like anybody and i was like i feel i was like putting my feelers out because i always do and i'm like i feel like aki's gonna be my favorite and then like as it goes on i'm like oh yeah this 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 bitch this bitch is the <laughs> which no, is what adds to my hatred for makima but like of course him his whole like thing being like um well his parents were killed by the gun devil so he wants to kill the gun devil and at the beginning they're like oh he hates devils but of course He's, he's got, like, the, at first I thought he was gonna be, like, one of those emo characters, like, I actually got, like, a little pissed for him at one point, because a side character does say that, it's like, oh, what are you gonna do, get, like, some emo revenge story, you think you're a character in a manga, it makes me, it gives me chills, makes me sick, and he's just like, yeah, I might, I might fail, but if I do, you're free to come laugh at my fucking corpse, and I'm like, oh, shit. (laughs) Nah, yeah, Aki's, Aki's a fucking different breed, he's built different. Yeah. Oh my god. And his soft, but like the fact that he's actually so soft hearted underneath it all. Like... Exactly, exactly. That's exactly what um, uh, Himiko was talking about, like in yeah. her letters. Like he's not, he's gonna, cr- like, he's gonna cry for me when I die. And that's yeah. why he's not suited for this. Yeah, it's like she, she wants to keep him alive. You can feel like she doesn't want more of her partners to die. But like the other reason she wanted him to stay alive is just because. She wants someone to cry for her when she dies, and Aki's the only person who will do that. So she's exactly, like, she exactly. Last. And then, like, their trainer, I always forget his name, but the old ass man with the scar on his face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In my mm-hmm. brain, I'm always just like, yeah, old man. <laughs> but yeah. He, I know, uh, I know, because they all call him old man all yeah, the time, and I like, just forget his name. Bro, what's your name? It's old man. Um, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me get the name. Let me get the name. I'm smart, I promise. Kashibe. Kashibe, yeah. Kashibe talks about, like, what makes a good devil hunter, and it's basically people that, they're crazy, they, like, don't give a fuck, um, they're off the wall, he even tells, like, uh, uh, what, what did you see, my, uh, Aki's partner's name is again, starts with an M, I always forget. Himeno, Himeno. Oh, never mind. I, I think I, I H. oh, uh, wait, you mean the, uh, girl with the eye patch cigarettes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the very, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. I think yeah. I called her uh himiko earlier i met himino sorry yeah yeah so another thing <laughs> another... the series being fast like this and me binging it is names hard to remember when they don't last uh, very long <laughs> yeah yeah no no like, when <laughs> when 95 percent of the chainsaw man cast is dead by the actually hold on it's more like a 98 isn't it because like the only people alive at the end Kishibe. are denji Ko- kobeni and Kashibe. Because Ko- remember, Kobeni's still alive. Yeah, Kobeni's alive. That's like it. <laughs> Everybody else is fucking dead. Um, yeah, yeah. It's kind of hard to remember names and faces sometimes. Um, but yeah, she. Uh, it, yeah, he was like talking to her. It is like, okay, you're you're still sane. You're not like you're not insane enough to be like a super good devil hunter. You're sane because you're still visiting the graves of your partners. Like, he's like, you still have that, like, emotional connection and soft-heartedness and, like, sympathy. Um, and then, like, of course, with Aki, I feel like at the beginning, he, it's, he was still soft-hearted, but I guess, like, wanting to fight the gun devil, um, was still, like, balancing it enough for him to be, like, a good devil hunter, quote-unquote. 
Um, mm-hmm. Because, of course, he's, like, thinking constantly about, I gotta get revenge for my family. I gotta get revenge for my family. Like, that's his main goal in life. Even though it seems like he has, like, these flashbacks that he didn't kind of fit in with his family because it shows, like, his parents constantly being around, like, his sicker, younger sibling and then being like, yeah. oh, what about your brother? But it seems like he does care because, I mean, he did have, like, soft-hearted feelings for his younger brother and all that. But... Uh, he was little. He was just a little kid who was being ignored. So he was a little bit angsty. Yeah, but it's like once he got that connection with Dingy and Power and the Angel Devil, it's like they became his new family. So Mm -hmm. the revenge part wasn't as important. And then when he like tries to be like, I want to pull our group out from the Gun Devil mission because he knows that or he knows that there's a large possibility of them dying. I don't think he cared about him dying as much because he only had like two years left to live anyway. So yeah. it was more about like I don't want them to die because they're my new family. I've already lost my family once, so I'm gonna pull them all out. And then Makima has the balls to be like, or not even the balls, but just like the gall to be like, oh well, you can drop out if you want, but Dingy and Power, you don't have to say what they do. They're gonna go fight the Gun Devil, and he's like, what the fuck? And and then she says that, and then doesn't make them fight the Gun Devil and just takes Aki. Yeah, so <laughs> fucked up. I. Fucking hate her ass, and you okay. know she did all that shit on purpose. <laughs> oh, she did one hundred percent. She did one hundred percent shit on purpose. Oh my god. Sure. Okay, let's 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 talk about the elephant in the room real quick before we continue Grunt? and talk about Makima. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the <laughs> groomer. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about Makima because I. I personally think that Makima is one of the most well-written villains that I've ever, like, read on a page. Like, yeah. personally. But I, but but trust me when I say that, I, I'm not... I, I don't have anything positive to say, like, past that. Like, the, oh, I can take away from the character and say that I like this villain. No, I hate her fucking guts. I hate her fucking guts. Oh, my God. Yes, I, uh, yeah, yeah, same feeling. I think she's very well written. Like I said, every, every, like, everything at the end was all parts of her plans that you can, like, see as the whole series panned out. Like, if you start from the beginning, you can just, her machinations, her oh, machinations yeah. were there. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, it's, it's even, it's even more chilling on, like, your second reread when you know where, what Makima is. And you just see everything and how fucking terrifying it is. Yeah. It's like actually, it's like actually chilling how um, well thought out her overarching plan is. It's not like one of those bullshit rug pulls. Like, aha, I was the villain all along. Like, you can you can tell from the beginning that something evil and fucked up is wrong with her. But by the end, you're like, oh, I didn't know it was this evil and fucked up. Yeah. God. But yeah, I do hate her. I hate her. She's a she's a fucking groomer ass bitch grooming dingy. Um for which for her own plans, of course, but it still doesn't change the fact that she's still grooming him. Um Yeah, no, no. And... Very I, I don't know how to phrase this sentence without sounding like a fucking insane weirdo. But her grooming is very well written. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wow, your grooming is very well written. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it's just like, like it, it, it just like, makes me feel gross when I read it sometimes because it's just like it's so realistic in some areas. Yeah, it's so like from a psychological and like emotional point of view, it is like very realistic, like freaky, creep. Oh God, yeah, it does just make my skin crawl every time. She's just like. Bleh. I hate it. Can't stand it. Um, ugh. But yeah, that and then on what she did to Aki, like him getting turned into the gun devil, all that shit, I knew, I knew that was gonna be part of it because like the future devil gave him a peek into the future. So it's like, um, it's he not said, like, you're gonna die the most horrible death that you can imagine. And yeah. it's like, you're not wrong. Yeah, uh, but they never specified that, like, it's not, see, it doesn't, I don't know how to explain it very well. Explaining time stuff is confusing. But the fact that, I, I had a feeling that 
him trying to change it, like, when he went, the angel devil was like, hey, why don't you try to change it? I had a feeling that was part of the future. Like, he's already saw that going to happen, and that led up to it happening anyway. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean. like, that was foreseen already. Yeah, like, already him, him, him trying to change it was part of it, yeah. Yeah, and I knew it. I was like, Fuck! Oh god, that that oh that whole sequence was just so good because it was like it was like after the angel devil says all that and and like it, it just thinking back to the beginning, I originally didn't like Aki that much because I thought that he was gonna be like uh, it's like he one of he and Denji's first interactions was like in that like alleyway where they were like kicking each other in the nuts. And being like, stay away from Maki, stay away from Ma or Makima, stay away from Makima. And I thought that he was going to be like that guy, you know. Um, <clears throat> but uh, but when like all that stuff was happening near the end, before the Gun Devil showed up, um, when he was like approaching Makima, he was like, "Wait, why did I even like her in the first place?" Yeah, and you realize and what that Makima is, and you're just like. Fuck. Yes, and then and then the whole sequence with like the angel devil's backstory where oh god. It was so fucked up. It's yeah, and you're just like, oh, he likely never really liked her like that in the first place. It's all just her fucking powers. And it's just oh. all and you know you know what? Another thing about Makima that just really chills me is like you can say that maybe some of her influence over them was like her literal powers uh since she is the control devil but personally since it isn't like directly stated i think that was just all like her fucking actual just words like like the, on the like verbal aspect of things like she's just like because she's the control devil, she's that good at conversation. I don't think she had like enchanting tongues or whatever. I I, I think that that was just her actual fucking brains and words. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. just so haunting. That I, I it, ah yes, very good. It's very good. <clears throat> what? Ooh, the whole yeah. yeah, the whole sequence of like. The fucking throwback to his his brother, like, throwing, um, having, like, a snowball fight. And, like, Denji replacing his brother in that sequence because, like, once again, like, the family overlay. And them just having fun and laughing in his, like, imagination. Meanwhile, he's, like, fucking brutally killing people and Denji is, like, crying practically. Like, stop doing this, Aki, please. Oh my god, that's, that's the closest I came to crying in this manga. I came really fucking close to crying through that whole sequence. I also came really close to crying with, like, the power sequence where she's, like, he's my he's my first friend. Those are the two times that I felt, like, emotionally, like, deeply emotionally impacted by this manga. Yeah. I wish there was a few more moments like that. Well, that and, um, those two, and then when he's helping power, uh, when she's, mm. like, afraid of the darkness devil. Oh yeah, that that whole chapter is probably one of my favorite chapters in the in the whole manga, if not my favorite, because it it just encapsulates everything. Like him actually turning Makima down on the trip offer. Yes, to stay with Power. Uh, oh. Yeah. God. Uh, it was it, uh, it was so great. It was so great. I I just loved it so much. Um, to me, like. I don't, I don't know, but I don't know, but the, the manga really emotionally connected with me. I, I, um, I have a very, one of my favorite tropes and, uh, favorite, like, characters in general are, are protagonists with, like, incredibly simple goals or, like, incredibly simple mindsets, like, on the surface, and throughout the manga, that simplicity gets explored and, like, the nuance of it gets, like, laid out in front of the reader. Like, I like looking at a protagonist in the first, like, five chapters and being like, okay, so I've got this guy down pat in my head about what type of character he is. And then by the end of it, just having that completely flipped on its head. And I feel like Denji did that really well. 
Yeah, because I, I had, like, that was one of my issues with Denji at the beginning, is, like, all of it was, like, uh, I just, I just want to touch a boob, uh, I, I can't wait to touch boobs, and then, like, yeah. he does it, and he's like, wow, this wasn't that groundbreaking after all, is this, is it always just gonna be, like, the thrill of chasing the dream that's good, which is a thing in philosophy about, like, you know, hedonism and all that, is chasing happiness, um, true happiness more than actually, uh, achieving it, but, um, yeah, uh, at the first I was just like, oh, come on, man, which just adds that whole nother layer at the end when he was like, yeah, I'm tired of accepting the bare minimum, I want more for myself. I was like, F yeah, fuck yeah, finally, finally, yeah, we yeah. get real shit now! <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I think it's like, also pretty, like, one of the ways that I also read Chainsaw Man is really from the perspective of how young Denji actually is. Because he's 16, right? Um, he's 16. Yeah. yeah, he's 16. But in my head, he's even younger than that because of how he was raised and all that kind of stuff. So he has a very young mindset about a lot of things, but also very crude and crass again, because of the violent world that he uh, was forced to live in, basically, like, taking on all his father's debts and forced to kill things for money. And I can't imagine some of the things he had to see. But, you know, just, just the very simple mindset and childlike mindset that he has. Like, even it's, you can even see it more in a second reading especially after you finish the manga. Um, like, in those moments where he's, like, talking about all that kind of stuff, you can really see almost the innocence in it in a way that, like, oh, he's saying all these things. Maybe, maybe I'm picking at it too much, but it, to me it was that innocence, like, oh, he's saying all this stuff because it's really all he knows. He really just wants intimacy, but... He just knows, like, yeah, people have sex, and that feels good. I would like to have that before I die. That would be pretty cool, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh... it's very... And it just, in to me, it also makes everything that Makima does ten times worse. Um, and make her even more heinous of a villain. Um, because you can really see that childlike innocence and mindset, like middle schooler, like elementary school mindset within Denji and how he perceives his relationships with other people intertwined with the like twisted worldviews he's adopted. And you can just see in every moment where she takes advantage of that and shows him these little moments of intimacy, which switches his mind to something else. And, and it's just so sickening, but it's it's amazing how it was laid out. It was just so carefully thought out. Yeah. God. Ugh. Ugh. God, I can't fucking stand her ass. Ugh. <laughs> oh, God. What what other what other takes do you have about Chainsaw Man? Um. Uh. Let's see. Let me think. Uh, was there anything I, I was there anything that you remember me complaining about originally that we haven't talked about? Um, oh, um, not really. This isn't really a hot take or anything, but the action, uh, the action is peak. Uh, probably like the best part of the series. Um, because mm -hmm. usually I'm not someone that really, like, remembers or focuses on action scenes that much. Um, mm -hmm. even then I tend to flip through them pretty fast. I'm like, okay, yeah, fighting, fighting, fighting. Where's, like, the emotional shit that's happening? Um, but the way that he draws, like, this gory, bloody action is, like, so artistic. It's fucking incredible. Um, I as, know, right? And as I said, he draws blood and gore in a way that isn't disgusting. Like, how do I say this? It's disgusting in a sense that, like, yes, organs and stuff are being ripped out, but it doesn't make me want to vomit when I see it. 
Um, there were times when I read, like, I tried to read parts of Battle Angel Alita, and, like, the way they draw, like, some of the, the guts and gore in that made me, like, Ugh! But this is, like, it feels like this very interesting artistic way that it's, like, oh, yeah, this is, like, gory and cool, but also just, like incredible to look at like just looking at the pages every time like god the perspective um how well he uses line weight his screen tones fucking incredible shading um lighting like it's so mm -hmm. good it's so good. exactly exactly so good. I, it's, it's absolutely amazing it's something that like i feel like i'm really gonna like this series when it's animated but they'll have to work super hard to make those action scenes on par with the manga because of how fucking good the manga art is for action like it's like looking at almost like a full-on painting sometimes he has so many like i know right i know right so if they can somehow replicate that well enough which it sounds like they're pouring a shit ton of money into this anime hopefully incredibly incredibly um it'll be it great <laughs> If they, if they can succeed. Did you see, uh, have you seen the trailer for the Chainsaw Man anime yet? I haven't. I haven't looked at it yet. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll send it, I'll send a link to, you know, it's only 30 seconds and there's only one trailer. <laughs> oh. So, um, yeah, yeah. It released, like, last year and there's only been one trailer for it. Oh, okay. Um, Actually, bite my tongue. It's a minute and 25 seconds. Um, but yeah, it's very short. Here, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put it so we could get your... Oh my god, guys! Uh, I do the reaction I do the reaction face that's on YouTube thumbnails. Adele <laughs> reacts to the Chainsaw Man trailer for the first time. Ooh, Wojak, I'm pointing at it. I'm pointing at it, Wojak face. Anyways. <laughs> It's done, uh, of course, you know, it's done by the Attack on Titan people. I have trust and oh, faith yeah. in the quality, okay, yeah, yeah, in the yeah. quality of it. But also at the same time, uh, I'm still worried about it because in the years, <laughs> in the years since I've started reading manga more than I've watched anime, I've become a little bit of an elitist, I think. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm still a little worried about it. Yeah, didn't the creator of Chainsaw Man also say that he doesn't mind if the anime is a bit different? Yes, he did, and I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that so much. Um, I I agree. I don't think an anime should just be a shot-for-shot -shot recreation. Oh, wait, don't watch it yet. Tell me when you watch it so we get your live oh, reaction. Oh, I'm already watching it. What? Fuck! <laughs> you're good, you're good. Continue. Um... But yeah, I, I agree also with people saying that like I don't like it when a manga is a shot for shot recreation of, or an anime is a shot for shot recreation of a manga. But I like it when it's pretty damn close to it being in style and execution and everything. Yeah, um, I um. If it's anything, okay, I'm fine with little tiny filler stuff yeah, and see, little an animation choices, but if it changes anything narratively, I would be very upset. Yeah, see, that's my thing, is, like, as long as you keep that core story and, like, character development everything, like, the main line, I'm cool with it. If you add, like, the extra filler that's anime only, that's cool. I love to see um characters that i like doing you know different things out of the box as long as they're still characterized correctly and stuff oh um, uh, yeah but yeah i will say shot for shot recreation is literally what season two of um seven seeds anime does and it yeah. it's weak for it um season one is dog shit season two is uh not necessarily a good or bad adaptation. Like, it's good story-wise, but that is because it, like, literally almost does panel-by-panel panel exact recreation so that animation kind of suffers because of it. Like, it's very mm. stiff. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just watched the trailer for this in a Chainsaw Man anime, and it looks like it's gonna be fucking good. Oh, man, that animation was fucking smooth, silky... I was kind of not wanting to watch the trailer because I was scared because I saw a screenshot of it once and it looked like they were doing his Chainsaw Man form 
I thought they were doing it with a 3D model at first, and I was like, no, no, no! But it could be, I if I trust anybody with 3D models, I trust MAPPA with 3D models, because they did the Dora Hey Doro uh, anime entirely with 3D models, and it looks beautiful. So if I trust anyone with stylized 3D models, it's them, but I also understand that sentiment. Yeah, well, the screenshot I saw, it didn't look that, like, flattering. This, seeing the whole trailer, it looks good. But, like, the screenshot I saw, I was like, oh, no, because I thought it was going to be, like, kind of clunky. Because I was like, oh, okay. there's no way they're going to be able to recreate these um, these panels and pages from the manga if this is what it's going to look like. But, no, this this trailer looks fucking great. Um, yeah. I'm excited. Oh, there's going to be... Uh, the poor animators, though, because there are so many... <laughs> There's so many fucking buildings being shattered into the tiniest of pieces, uh, like tw- 10,000 tiny pieces that are going to have to be animated. Yeah. Like, oh my god, I feel so bad exactly, for them. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but... Oh my god, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's very, it's very, uh, I, I'm faithful. I'm faithful in it, but also, yeah. Yeah, scared. I'm. I, I, I was not scared until I saw that one interview with the author. Like, yeah, they could change stuff, and I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if they if they change like the story a lot and like characters, I'm not gonna be happy. Don't there be was happy. that one part. There was that one part of the trailer. I've always been trying to figure out if it's what Beach? I think it is. Huh? Yeah, no, not like if that one. That one's fine. I don't care about that. It's the one where uh, Jimeno's in bed with someone. It looks like it's Aki, yeah. and I don't. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, it does. Is it? In, I, is it? In, it doesn't or does? I think it does. Wait a minute. I'm. I'm. Spe- I'm looking back again because it looks like the person has black hair. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought too. It and he's does. smoking. Oh yeah, that looks like it's definitely Aki. Are they gonna? I don't think there's. No, there wasn't like I mean there was kind of I mean you could you could tell that they really cared for each other, but it was I didn't feel like it was Aki Aki th- Yeah, Aki didn't have those feelings. I feel like Himido kinda did. Um Yeah, yeah. Because like she talks to Dinji and she's like, Oh, you like Makima, well I like Aki, so you should help set me up with Aki and I'll get you with Makima. Um but Aki, yeah, I think he just saw her as like kind of like another sort of familial friend type especially because aki or uh, makima had that charm over him so he thought that he just yeah yeah um so it didn't feel like that between them at all also like i don't know their age difference but she was like smoking and then like i remember like when she first offers him to smoke and she's like oh you're a minor well no you can't smoke then so i'm like eh, what's the age difference there uh i don't know how i feel about um this <laughs> if they're gonna portray oh, it as like romantic and sexual because i know like now like currently in present day in the manga aki's like eh, like he's an uh he's an adult now but like when they first met they weren't and he's been working there for like what three years they said yeah from the, the fandom consensus i'm uh looking at it uh oh fucking christ hold on uh, from the uh, consensus from the fandom, people are saying like, "Yeah, him is like maybe three to five years older than Aki." Five. <laughs> Shit. I would. I don't know. I don't know. Here, hold on. Pause for. Can you? No, I can. Stop no, okay. It. Well, yeah. No, don't stop it. Don't stop it. I'm just gonna. Uh, I'll cut this part out. I'll cut this part out. <laughs> Forgets and uploads it. Here, no, uh, Adele, talk for a minute. I have a talk. phone call. Talk. Okay, what am I? Okay. Well, Aki, <laughs> Aki, Aki has to take a, a phone call from likely his mother or some other person. Uh, what do I talk about about Chainsaw Man? Let's see. Um, I feel like I've already talked about everything. Ah, shit. Oh, uh, let me look up her name real fast because I want to pronounce it right. Um... I think it's Quan Z. I want to say it's Quan Z or Quan Chi. Quan Chi? Quan Chi. Quan Chi is how you say her name. The first devil hunter. Deserved fucking better. I saw that, um, the fan rankings, and why was she not in top ten? 
I mean, if it was for halfway through the series, where where was Quan Chi in that top ten? Literally, like one of the, one of the if not the hottest character design in this fucking series, um, dedicated to her girls. Uh, her her all of her devil girlfriends are cool as fuck, by the way. Uh, Halloween super cool, being able to like um, memorize everything in the universe as like her ability so where you're only able to think about Halloween was like fucking crazy. Um like I wish we I wish Quan Chi was around more. That's my only my only downside about her is man, I wish she lasted way longer. Um because she was interesting. And I mean the only thing that we really got a uh, peek about her backstory in Kishibe was like you can kind of tell that they were friends because she's kind of like off from an old friend to another, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then, of course, you have, like, the random um, comics, like, for Koma in the back where he tried to hit on her and, like, was in love with her in the past. And she's like, oh, I found out that I liked girls. Um, and that's it. That's all you got about them. Uh, I really wish we could have learned more considering she's a devil hunter from China, and he's, um, I guess, always been in Japan. So I'm kind of like, what? when did they start working together? Um, and also her being the first devil hunter? How old is she? I thought Kishibe would be older than her. Wait, how is she the first devil hunter? And if, how long has devils existed again? Um, like, have they not existed that long? Uh, yeah. There's a lot of questions I had about Quan Chi that I just that they just weren't answered. Um, can can I get like a side manga something about her? Uh, let's see. Other than that, did we have Quan Chi? Oh, and the fucking whole like two page spread lesbian sex orgy was not expecting that in the middle of this manga. Kind of fucking shocked that this is eighteen plus and not an M rated manga. Um. I know maybe in maybe in Japan because I I seen like some people talk like oh well there's other series that have this and this and they both ran and shown and jump and I'm like okay but I'm surprised that like it came here in English and they didn't age like put the age limit higher just because you know the, anything to do with like sex and nudity and stuff gets rated higher um, and vice versa but uh, so yeah let's see Quan Chi. Um, Oh, I loved the bomb girl character, uh, the bomb devil. I forget her human name. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, never mind. His his mom came home. I have to continue talking and finish it off, and we'll have to make a part two. Uh, yeah, the uh, the bomb devil um, was a very interesting arc. Uh. It was nice to see Denji get, like, connect with someone who wasn't Makima. Uh, I actually, they were way more interesting and, like, had way more chemistry together. I wish she would have survived. Um, there was also this whole part where Denji's like, I just realized every woman I come across wants to kill me. Everybody wants Chainsaw Man's heart. Doesn't anybody want Denji's heart? Like, what about Denji? Which... Uh, is also brought up again later, like, kind of parallel to him later on, ends up being how he kills Makima. Um, he realizes that Makima only, uh, really notices people by their scent and doesn't recognize faces, which I didn't pick up on, which is, I really liked that plot twist. If I go back and read it, I'll have to, uh, check and see, um, where all the hints for that were. But, uh, yeah, the, the way that he was able to kill Makima was, um, she was only, like, smelling Chainsaw Man, like, his heart in him. He on She only saw Chainsaw Man. She did not see Denji for who he was. So that's how he was able to kill her, like, swap and just make, like, a piece of, or, like, from a piece of Pochita's heart. Um, because, once again, like, she wasn't seeing his heart. She wasn't seeing Denji. She just saw Chainsaw Man. And that's really what Dingy wants, I feel like, is, like, he wants someone to care about him for him, which is why, like, you know, he ends up having that super strong bond with Aki and power, because they like him for him. Yes, he's Chainsaw Man as part of their team, but who they care about mostly is Dingy. Um, like, 
the scene that Aki sees when he dies is him just playing uh, like a snowball fight with Dinji. Uh, another heartbreaking thing about that scene is Dinji crying and Aki going, this is the first time I've seen you cry. Like, this is the first time we've seen Dinji cry for, like, true emotional, like, sadness, especially at death. I'm sure he's cried because of, like, pain in other parts, like, physical pain. But this is our first, like, emotional connection, sort of, um, pain, which made me want to cry. Um, and then, you know, you have that whole thing about him eating Makima at the end, which, of course, is Chainsaw Man. Um, everything he eats, it erases their identity from existence. So, of course, he had to eat Makima at the end, but I really thought it was gonna be, like, in his Chainsaw Man form, he would just, like, rip and tear her apart and eat her, almost, like, zombie-fi, like, zombie-like hunger. I did not expect him to cut her up and then eat her, like, mmm, delicious patties and stuff. Which, you know, I mean, I guess he got his wish about wanting to eat more than just toast and jam. He wanted steak and shit, and he got that by eating Makima. <laughs> Uh, and of course he wanted to become one with her, like, it's like, yeah, I still like you after all that you did, I'm gonna take on your sins, which I'm like, damn. Her control, <sighs> I feel like she didn't even super have to use her control powers on him, because she just knew exactly what he wanted, which wasn't much at the beginning for so long. And as Hockey said, he gave, she gave him the intimacy and, like, safety that he wanted at the beginning. So, of course, that connection is always going to be there with her in his mind. Uh, but yeah, he eats her, and she's part of him. They're together forever now, in that weird, twisted way. Um, and then we get her reborn, technically, as a new control demon, which I was so scared. Uh, because, of course, now she's, like, a younger child. I'm, like, terrified that if they ever showed up in part two, which I don't know if they will, that, uh... There might be, like, some weird-ass romance between them. Please do not do that. Um, I don't think he'll do that because it's, like, really all that Makima wanted was a family. And that's kind of what Dinji wants as well. Um, so I feel like there's more, there's, it's gonna stay platonic between them. Uh, and it'll kind of be, like, how he was with power. Like, taking care of her and all that. It doesn't have any sort of sexual or romantic connotation to it. Just, like, this nice, pure, wholesome, uh, relationship. Although, <laughs> Kishibe having Dinji raise her, like, Dinji is, like, one of the most fucked up people you can ever raise a child. <laughs> and he's like, here, why don't you raise the new Makima? <laughs> She'll turn out different than before. Uh, but yeah, both, like, Pochita's true dream was just he wants to be hugged, but as Chainsaw Man, he couldn't hug people. Um, because, I mean, he wasn't like Dinji, he just killed everybody. Um... And so, Dinji allows him to finish that, to, like, complete that dream for him. And, uh, he's like, Makima also wanted to make the world new so that she could have a family. Because the only way she was able to connect with people was through power and controlling others. Which, I thought was also, is like, a very interesting, uh, motivation for her. Uh, it's like, yeah, this is what she wanted. She wanted a family, she wanted genuine connection with people, but she didn't know how to go about it. Went about the wrong way, the only way that she knew. And it's like, now she's in this new form, and she can finally, like, you know, be hugged, and be platonically loved, and held, and, like, treated like a family member. Um, so, yeah, that was nice. I thought the ending was nice. Um, devils get to come back. If you kill them in hell, they come back as a human. With, I guess, no memory. Um, so here's my question. If, if Aki is a gun devil when he died, or no, was he a fiend? Actually, I think he's a fiend. Do fiends get to come back? Yes, because, because power, blood, power is a fiend. Blood fiend? Anyway, if that's the case, where devils, fiends, whatever, get to come back when they die, does that mean Aki is in hell, and if he gets killed in hell, he gets to come back as human Aki again? That's my question. Um, but yeah. Uh, overall, this this was a good series for me. It was definitely something a lot different. Um, if I ever reread it, it's probably not going to be for a long time. I'd probably put it like, maybe like a 7. 7.5 7 out of 10. Uh, just because it made me feel like really depressed reading a lot of it. Uh... Which is obvious for the subject matter. There's a lot of dark shit going on. A lot of gore, violence. 
But I will say the ending was nice. The ending did make me feel good. It's technically a happy ending, even though 80, I think 98% of the characters died by the end. Um, and I'm definitely interested to see what he do, what he does with part two of the series whenever he does it. Um, I might read it as it comes out, or maybe in chunks. But, yeah. Oh, I'm also very glad. Didn't you get to go to school? Just like what he talked about with the bomb, uh, the bomb devil. Like, hey, it's fucked up that you're not going to school. Like, isn't that bad? And at the end, he becomes a high schooler. Isn't that great? But yeah. I'm glad I read this. I'm definitely looking forward to the anime. I feel like there's some parts that just will will be even more impactful to me. Uh, watching an anime form, like the, the music, voice, acting, like seeing an emotion. Um, and also, like, Santa Claus arc was confusing to me, as Hockey said. I was like, wait, who's the original? I get that anybody can be the doll, but yeah, it's that's going to be something I think will make more sense to me animated, watching it, and, like, consuming it the second time. There's a lot of things that it was like, okay, this is kind of confusing, and all of it was happening really fast, but, yeah, great action series if you want something that's not very long, um, incredible action, has some really emotional, emotionally impactful scenes, uh, very well-written, disgusting fucking villain, um, with, like, plotting that was like chosen from the beginning which of course on this doing this on such a small scope or scale kind of helped with that uh like like when you're when you're planning out a shorter series like this it it i'm sure it helped with his brainstorming and like writing out like okay all of this is connected this is her plan and then you you do it in the like 11 volumes bam done um but yeah so yeah, say like seven, seven out of five, uh, seven or seven point five out of ten, which is a good score for me. Um, I don't give many series like ten out of tens, so seven point five is still really high. Uh, but yeah, um, thanks for listening. Uh, hopefully next time Hoggy can stay the whole time. Uh, bye.